Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Boob Two Buddies podcast, the fourth episode of our marathon podcasting session of fucking Netflix's Luke Cage, entitled <sighs> "Step in the Arena." How you doing, Martha? Man, how's your energy? Um, I don't think I'm doing that bad, but it, it has been eight hours. I'm kind of tired. Aren't oh, you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm doing all right. I think we can get through it. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll be fine. Um, we did just want to try out the nice sensual, real close, sweaty balls, Mike. Mm, sweaty balls, eh? Yeah. Hopefully people have seen that uh, SNL skit. Otherwise, we just said sweaty balls into a mic for no reason. super unnecessary and awkward. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, okay. But for real, I'm just going to go through the, the thing. What thing? The intro. We just did the intro. I mean, I didn't do the Facebook, I didn't do the Twitter, I didn't do the YouTube, I didn't do the Reddit, I didn't do the email, I didn't do the introduction, I didn't do the iTunes. Uh, so he actually just did all of those things. Okay. By, by saying he didn't I, do I it. I think we're ready right, to kick it right, off. Right, yeah, we've that's gotten it. through it. Okay. Uh, so, Mothman's doing okay. That's the only thing it was missing. <laughs> right? Yeah, oh yeah. Weird, true. right? Uh, how's it going, Foxman? It is going well. My energy level is decent considering really that is. we've been doing this for about 10 hours, almost nine. We've been doing it for nine hours, right? Something like that. Yeah. Nine yeah, nine to six. six. Yeah, yeah, nine hours. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. And then we'll do this for 45 minutes, and then I'll spend 30 minutes editing it, and then we'll be done for, oh my God. for at least four days. Wow. Ugh, man. That's just a fucking crazy nine hour podcasting session. Yeah. But hey, <laughs> The reason we did it is for our loving fans so that you could have some, uh, we know with Netflix shows, especially Marvel shows, since there's a big following and there's already shows in that universe that it's pretty typical people are going to binge through the entirety today or this weekend. Yeah. So we figured if, if we could find a way to get you as much content sooner rather than later, um, that would be better. So we're glad to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And this will be the last one for our marathon. Uh, we will start recording at a, a more regular pace starting after mm-hmm. this. We'll probably have another two or three up uh, at some point this week. W- wouldn't you agree? Uh, Over yeah. Over the next week? Yeah, in the next two weeks, we should have probably another three Luke Cage. Because the other great thing is starting on Sunday, we'll watch Westworld. And I think on Monday, we'll have... Uh, a recording of the Westworld podcast. So yeah, we just have a lot of great TV coming out. Absolutely, so. yeah. Between uh, between Westworld and Luke Cage, we're going to do our best to continue putting out as much as possible. And of course, Boob Two Betty's are still doing American Horror Story. Oh yeah, and we got some other stuff uh, coming down the pike too. So, um, uh, without any further ado, would you like to go ahead and step into this episode? Absolutely. So, uh, I think this is actually my favorite episode overall. It's certainly mine. So, too. last episode, I, I still liked. Plenty happened, um, but. Outside of the really sweet action towards the end, it felt like it was kind of just moving stuff along. But it's kind of nice. It's almost like a comic story arc. It was, you know, three issues, and that story kind of stopped for right now. And now we're actually getting more of the origin story. So we yeah, actually see it was see almost. Luke I'd say it was like ninety percent origin story on this one. So it, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it took you out of uh, out of Harlem for yes. most of it. Actually, out of the state of New York, and uh, went down to Georgia to um, what is it? Not Seacoast. Seagate. Well, Seagate. Yeah, that's, a, that's in New York. Seagate Prison? Yeah. I thought that that was in Georgia. No. Are you sure? I mean, I looked up Seagate Prison. It's in New York. Oh, okay. Unless there's an alternate Seagate Prison in Georgia. The reason I actually looked it up is because they have some fictional um, prisons in the Marvel Universe. Okay. But those are, I think, primarily for superheroes, and he wasn't a superhero when he went into jail. Um, but I'm going to look this up right now. Seagate Prison is real and also a Marvel database. Okay, we're about to find out. Okay. You ready for this? Riveting. Hey, it is in Georgia in the Marvel Universe, but apparently it's also a prison in New York. Oh, man. Wow. Rare occasion of both parties being completely right and completely wrong. Yeah, right? Okay. Okay. Anyway, very good. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it, it starts off actually with him in New York, present time in the show, sitting in a pile of rubble in the aftermath of that RPG that, uh, a cottonmouth shot into. Connie's, what is it? Connie. Yeah, no, no, no. But what was the name of her restaurant? Genghis Connie. Genghis Connie. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, So the camera kind of pans up and a huge chunk of the entire building is destroyed. You can kind of see it from the street corner now. And uh, for sure, the entire restaurant is fucked. Yeah. um, But all the apartments above it also completely leveled. Uh, It it is absolute mayhem. Yeah, just complete, utter, senseless destruction. Uh, We went back and forth. Um... You, I think you could tell last episode I wasn't willing to make a stand unequivocally that she was definitely dead because I was like, well, you know, he's super strength. He could have shielded her. Unlikely. 
Um, and then you were kind of saying on a molecular level, there's no way. But even I didn't buy how unharmed she was. Uh, I mean, that was obscene. Like, I get that her ankle is slightly crushed by a rock, but... Yeah. She... I'm looking forward to moving past this part of it, because to me, they it was a little disappointing because they could have explained it away. Like they could have shown uh, a quick flashback to that of him, like shielding her entire body with his, the weight of his body. Or just like, like pinning her to the ground where like literally all of the blast just hit his back. Yeah. But even then I felt like she'd just have singed clothing and burns. Yes. And stuff. Um, the other thing I think they could have done to avoid this, cause this did bother me, but the rest of the episode was so good. It didn't matter is I thought maybe if the rocket just wasn't like, as controllable and it just hit the building not even the glass yeah and but the it building went, like, collapsed straight towards it went, them it hit the, the window yeah, yeah and then blew up in the diner yeah on um, the seat that they were and this sitting is in. meant to destroy a tank yes and it leveled an entire motherfucking building and you're telling me that this non-superhuman lady who's sitting there it got came away with the only injuries she had was because of the stuff falling around her not from the initial blast Okay, let's move on from let's it, but I, I just, I had to point that out because it was the only upsetting part of what was otherwise a perfect episode. Yeah, and, okay. and I will say Luke Cage um, did have a funny moment here when he's trying to explain how he's going to get him out of this mess, and he, he finally admits that he's uh, kind of strong. Yeah, yeah kind of strong. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little strong. <laughs> um, and, and I like here where uh, Misty Knight is outside talking to the husband of Connie uh, and... And he does not seem particularly upset that his wife's inside. No, I feel like he has a sizable insurance policy on her <laughs> yeah. just because of their age. Yeah. And um, he's trying not to look excited because then it would look like he did it. Oh, yeah. But he's also just like, you know, we've been together 50 years. I'm over it. He's like, like I never wanted to name that restaurant fucking Connie's anyway. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> it's supposed to be Genghis Lonnie's. Or maybe they just had a fight about uh, Genghis or Kubla. And he wanted to be Kubla Connie's. <laughs> nice. And then just divided the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, so, anyway, this is where we get our flashback to Seagate Prison. Because Luke Cage is still uh, kind of asleep. So, they make you think, like, that this is him, like, while he's knocked out, having some sort of uh, flashback in his head to it. And Seagate Prison seems very, like, military-esque. Very much so. Um, the prison uniforms, it's a private prison, which they show. The uniforms they use and everything else are very... Um, almost like the SS. Of, oh, yeah. You know? well, and then the guy who I think is Rackham, right? That, I like think that's Sergeant the Rackham. Or, yeah. It wasn't Sergeant. Rackham what? Sackham Robots or something like <laughs> yeah. that. But, but he's very Aryan looking. Very Aryan, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, blonde hair, blue eyed, like the prominent cheekbones and everything. Yeah, and he has this... Um, it kind of reminds me of the moment from Full Metal Jacket where... Um, whatever that guy's name is, that really known guy, the general, is going through and kind of going through... Um, dressing everyone down. Dressing everyone down, going through, like, the, the rules of the land. You get the same thing from him. But you know, he was an forward. actual drill sergeant, and when he went in to do that movie, he was originally just supposed to be the one who was... Um, uh, who was going to be uh, consulting the person who was actually casting oh, the role? He was that. so good at it that like, they fired yeah. the other guy and put him Suck in the role. A, a golf ball through a garden hose, Sergeant. <laughs> yeah, that movie's great. But it's very much a scene like that. Uh, it's almost like a Fight Club rule set. Like the first rules that you follow all my other rules. Yes, like, kind of yeah. that type of stuff. And from the get go, he hits Luke Cage in the stomach. Um, yeah, because Luke Cage kind of scoffs or he makes some sort of noise. Yeah, yeah, he makes some sort of noise. Um, I don't think he even says anything. Like he just audibly breathes or whatever. It's just and, like a yeah. sort of thing, mm -hmm. like a, a slight cough, uh, and then it goes from there. So yeah, and then uh, Luke is sitting alone in his cell and he's just kind of punching the walls. By the way, no superpowers at this point. Nope. So bloody in the because you weren't sure and, yet. Like I mean, oh, I yeah. wasn't. I was like, is he? How far back have we gone yeah. in this timeline? And yeah, you so, realize it's like it hurts his fist when he punches the wall. Yeah, this is uh, definitely BLC. Mm -hmm. You know, like before Luke Cage. Very funny, very funny. <laughs> uh, we definitely need to establish some kind of Marvel timeline instead of like BC, AD, you know, <laughs> yeah, like exactly. before the New York event after. Well, I figured this is his origin story, so that's basically taking it back to the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah, but um, okay, so the next scene, uh, you got him in a therapy session, which is kind of a staple of his experience at Seagate Prison. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, we learn that his name actually at this point is Carl, not Luke Cage. Yes, which um, I realized three quarters into the episode. <laughs> For some reason, I just immediately thought his chubby friend was Carl because his name is Luke Cage. Yeah, <laughs> his chubby friend's name is Squabbles. And yeah. uh, but so yeah, he's just he doesn't want to share, and he's kind of just like 
he's just there basically, you know, listening to everybody share their little experiences with you know, uh, giving uh, the therapist a hard time saying trust is what got me in here. Yeah. And, you know, basically at one point he tells her like, you know, it's earned. So if you want us to trust in you, why don't you tell us, you know, what's your story? He's like, you know, let me guess, you left somebody behind while you were pursuing a better life and, and your degree and, you know, somebody got left behind. You can tell like that really hits home. So sure. sure. Except that we know from our prior trivia that he wasn't pursuing a degree. Uh, she was pursuing a degree. He's like, oh. I'm saying he was saying that about her. Like, oh, let me guess. Oh, that okay. That's when it was like his snide comments. Yes, okay. okay. Exactly. Yeah. Cause they very early on have a back and forth relationship where he is pressing her buttons. Um, but it, it quickly becomes to a point where he realizes that she cares. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like that she's not just, you know, typical, like this is my job. I come in. I, you, and know. you know what? We get her name at one point and it's Reva. Yes. So this is the dead wife. Of, yes. or I think it said wife at some point. Right? Yeah, or dead, uh, you know, significant, significant other, other, whatever. Yeah. So but, this uh, is Pop's daughter. Pop's daughter. And exactly. this is how they meet. So this is the, the origin of their love, too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So sexy. Sensual balls. <laughs> All right, that wasn't <laughs> okay, creepy. Um, um, but uh, uh, somewhere around this point, um, we, we see Shades is in there as well. And he's talking to um, uh, Ratchet. <laughs> What's his name? Rackham. Yeah, Rackham Sackham. Yeah. yeah. He's talking to Rackham Sackham. Uh, shades isn't wearing shades. Do, do people refer to him as Shades here? Uh, I feel they like have they have to because he knows them shades. But like, yeah. I guess it's just not up to, you know, you could stab someone by sharpening the plastic of one of the um, yeah, ear bands. Yeah, that sort of contraband would not be good. Anything's a shiv in prison. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, well, and to be fair, it seems like they have, like, all sorts of access to weapons anyway, as we find out throughout the episode. super crooked, yeah. Yeah, um, but so um, it, it, it kind of is, uh, just to kind of cut to the meat of it, what we find out is that there's, like, a prison fighting system, and Shades kind of helps uh, Rackham to recruit new people, and he thinks Luke Cage would be a good fit, so... Uh, Shades ends up jumping Luke Cage in his uh, in his prison cell along with another inmate, and Luke Cage just sends them both. Beats the fly- shit out of oh, him. Oh yeah, they stab him a couple of times, yeah, but he still beats their ass because he does not have the powers for sure. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, but um, he it, basically the warden Rackham, whatever. I don't know if he's the warden, but whatever his deal is, he walks up at that point. He's like, "Guess I found me a gladiator." Yeah, so he's super excited about getting you know this underground ring going, and you're learning more and more about it. Um, yeah, and they throw poor Luke into solitary at this point too, and after uh, the fighting incident. Yes, and so this is kind of how uh, Rackham gets Luke into it, or he tries to at first. He he said, you know, after Luke's been in solitary for however long, um, it, it, Ward, Rackham offers him a chance for like a little extra freedom if it'll work for him, and Luke says. Slavery was always a good offer to the masters. Yeah, a nice little burn there. But as he's, you know, essentially one, I don't think we've talked about his sweet beard. No, oh my God, and his sweet quest love hair. Yeah, which well, grows so, out more and more throughout well, So he starts with just having like a little bit of, of hair grown, but then a beard. Yeah, which very we're not small used to. afro on top. But after he's thrown in solitary, um, and uh, he and squabbles down by the prison yard. <laughs> when he goes out to the prison yard, he's immediately actually ready to get in a fight. He goes and grabs a weight, and he's about to retaliate to the people that attacked that's him. That's right, yeah. And he squabbles like, uh-uh, that's not how we play and here. He's like, you people get... see that stare from a thousand yards away. Yeah, you want to get back in solitary? And so that's, um, I think, where their friendship flourished even a little more. Yes, it is. Because it's him like helping him out. It wasn't just this dude in therapy. That's when you start to kind of see these connections. Um, but ultimately, it's not long until... Uh, he threatens Luke with his friendship with Scrabbles to make him fight. It is, yeah. There, there's a part where um, where Rackham basically like gets Luke, and they're sitting next to a window, and they're looking at Squabbles, and uh, and Rackham's like, "Listen, you know, if if I can't do things to you that are gonna make you break and want to do this, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out on your friend Squabbles and get to you that way." So, yes. um, so he basically has one inmate uh, shiv another as Luke Cage is watching Intense. through this window. Yeah, and then uh, and then basically it's getting blamed on squabbles. Yeah, and immediately this dude gets stabbed. Luke is watching and being kind of held, you know, kind of held uh, up to the glass by Rackham. And then after it's done, like immediately as it starts, and this is how you know he's immediately in on it, Rackham set, blows the whistle before it even happens. Yeah. Like just as he's singing. It's it, almost more of like a, okay, let's get this thing started. It's almost he's a signal to start it. it. Yeah. So then the guys get stabbed. 
Squabbles does nothing. He just sits there. They throw the bloody blade next to him, and then he just lays on the ground and just gets the shit beat out of him oh, by yeah. the guards. So now Luke knows, like, you play ball with these guys or else they're going to just fucking ruin everybody around you, do anything they can to get to you. So he has to kind of work with them. But throughout this whole episode, um, you're getting the origin story, but interspersed uh, is moments where he has now woken up in the rubble, in the present, underneath the... Uh, in like this tiny pocket, but like where the debris hasn't spread to basically underneath the building that blew up, uh, Connie's Genghis Connie's. Yes. Um, and Connie's alive in there. And, uh, and, and so there's just like little moments basically where like, um, he starts shifting pieces of debris in an attempt to create a path for them to get out. And yeah. And he told her like, you know, how strong he is. And yeah. Stuff like that. So you're seeing that kind of interspersed between the other thing that I don't know if it's happened at this point in the show, but throughout the different therapy sessions, what is brought up is that uh, inmates are being experimented on. And you can tell that Reva does not believe this at all. Um, so much so she even gives her word that this isn't happening and that it's just crazy and that yeah she well she's mocking the mythos of it she's like yeah Tupac's here billionaires are in cells there's experiments everywhere like yeah she's bringing up other um, I guess like urban legends for the place and this is you know painting the picture that this is just another one yes and they are I can't remember the name but they're all bringing up a certain person that they knew that they think was part of him which she's like yeah he probably just got out right yeah <laughs> i know and the other thing she brings up which i thought was kind of nice because we've talked about in the past how they talk about some kind of race issues and political issues but it's never really heavy-handed like it's just in a you know they put the nature of things out there and kind of let you decide and make your own conclusions but they don't shy away from it though. they don't You're shy right, away from it either. heavy-handed they're not preaching they, but they mention like, a lot of social issues that black there. people face and the one African Americans and well, okay. God who's part of the problem here right <laughs> anyway the thing I was gonna point out is that um, one of the things she says as she talks about all these urban legends is I know you think and I don't know if she says this verbatim but I know you think these private prisons are the devil yeah so they let you know that Seagate's a private prison um, which, for all of you who don't know, like it's an insane how many people we have incarcerated compared to any other country. Yeah, majority of which are black. And the other problem is that half of our prisons are corporate businesses. They yeah. don't aren't government prisons. They're just there to make a profit. Yeah. Um. So you know, she obviously acknowledges that that's kind of an issue, but also is saying it's not that bad. They're not experimenting on prisoners and doing these other things. Yes. Um. And then I think Squabble says. I've never heard her give her a word like that. Like, yeah, so I true. believe her. Yeah. yeah. So you, you get the picture that she's not up on it, like in on any of this. Like it's a crooked place, but she's unaware. Well, and the other thing that is happening, uh, okay, so that's the main plot line is this mm -hmm. origin story. And uh, like we talked about, there is Luke Cage trying to get free from the rubble underneath uh, Genghis Khanis. Uh, the third arc that is occurring is Misty Knight and Detective Scarf uh, realize that there is a camera, uh, like a NYPD security camera sort of thing, or traffic camera, uh, that's facing this intersection. So um, basically they go and they watch the video and they see an RPG go into the building. So they know that this they're is like, like a oh, gas shit. leak or something like well, that. And I think know? someone, yeah, they're like, that ain't no gas leak. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. do something like this. And Misty's like, who do you think? So yes. the implications, obviously, well, the crime in the city, which is Cottonmouth. Yes. Um, I will, I'd like to point out too, at this point, that last episode, we made a comment that uh, Frank Whaley was kind of like a um, sassy black woman inside of a detective's body. Yeah. And that was right before, of course, he betrayed um, everyone. And we, we I mean, crushed. it was literally like <laughs> the scene before. Yes. Uh, but I would like to point out that uh, Frank Whaley responded on Twitter and said, much appreciated. That's exactly what I was going for. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah he's a good sport about yeah, it. That was funny. very much. So I appreciated that. Yeah, for sure. So um, uh, basically, um, Rackham has created some sort of underground fighting thing, and now Luke starts training with Squabbles for it, who used to be some sort of fighter when he was coming up. And uh, so Luke goes into his first fight, and right out of the gate for like the first few seconds, he's getting his ass beat a little bit. But he quickly turns it around, knocks the guy down, and then it's kind of like a um, montage. Montage. <laughs> and he is just fucking kicking ass and taking names. But as it's occurring, you see his beard and his hair getting really He's not wide. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and Squabbles even says like, kind of looks like you're spiraling downwards, man. You're not showering. Your hair is a little overgrown. And Luke just basically says, like, you know, I'm just focused on one thing right now. Yeah, which is basically keeping his friend alive. Yes, which he's doing through fighting. Yeah, and uh, I thought it was uh, a kind of nice little exchange. Squabbles talks about his history and how he ran the block when he ran dope, you know, and that's where he learned his fighting. And when he wasn't fighting,
fighting, he would watch kung fu movies. Yeah. And the first thing he says about kung fu movies looks like you can't learn how to fight from that. And he's like, well, I actually fought. Uh, and then they had an little exchange where they disagree on their favorite kung fu artist. One of them likes um, Luke likes or Carl at this point likes Bruce Lee. Yeah. Whereas uh, Squabbles likes Jet Li. Is that what it was? It was yeah. Jet Li. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and he, he mentioned I can't remember the name, but it was like a remake of a movie, so he knows his stuff. Like, yeah. He had the stats. Um, but at some point Luke ends up seeing Reva again and apparently he's been skipping the counseling session for a couple of months now. She's really worried about him and uh, so you know he, he tells her like listen it's not all about me. Yeah What's in veiled language now? he implies that it's you know something broader is going on but yeah. also not saying anything and this is one of those moments where I kind of was like man I wish you'd just tell her but you, it doesn't you, want to include her. It's yeah, it's for her protection. Yeah, this, and this is one of those rare occasions where it, the, it is frustrating, but it's also you can have it explained. Yes, and it's I mean rightfully so because immediately after Rackham goes up to him, um, you know, Luke pushes him against the wall and he says, "Hey, hold off, don't don't attack." Well, yeah, him. because when she walks off, Shades walks over and, talks and to like, her. yeah, and like kind of and then gives a look back at Luke like, "Yeah, I know what's up." And then um, Rackham can see how rattled that. And then immediately after uh, Rackham says something along the lines to the guards, don't worry about it. And then uh, it's, hey, Carl, it's nice to know there's more than one person you care about. So essentially it says you just gave me another card. Yeah. Without even telling her any details. (sighs) Yeah. Which which is (laughs) a big time bummer. And then you get your quick cut back here to the present and uh, Luke uh, gets the gigantic piece of concrete that was on Connie's leg off. So... That plot line is slowly moving along. Uh, it just a minute rate. It's basically like uh, like every ten minutes they cut back to it for thirty. And I seconds. think the only reason it's almost at all in there is just because it's almost a cliffhanger from last episode. Yes, but really this is his origin episode. And they just need you know five minutes of footage to show what's still happening. Yeah, and just to kind of tie it in, because in any scene where things are happening, like you know him lifting the thing off her leg, there there's some other scene that's occurring of him lifting something in you know in the old scene so they're tying them together with with small little moments like that. the most effective that. being you know the, at the end the grand finale like the true origin uh which we'll get the to. punching yeah, yeah okay gotcha mm-hmm. um okay so uh actually this might not be a bad point to cut to our uh our audible ad yeah absolutely so uh let's go to that and then we'll be right back cool sounds good this episode of the BoobTube Buddies podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash BoobTubeBuddies. One of the 180,000 available books that jumped out at me was The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business. The title seemed appropriate in the middle of an eight-hour podcast marathon. What am I doing with my life? What kind of habits am I forming? Is this the best version of me? Do I make eight-hour podcasting a daily exercise so I can be the best podcaster I can be? Will that bankrupt my family and I? Where will I podcast from then? Fuck! Self-help books are fucking exhausting. You know what? Let's change this up. Check out Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It's a lighthearted tale of magic and heroism that won't make you regret every single motherfucking decision you ever made in your life. Learn some magic spells instead at www.audibletrial.com slash boobtubebuddies. Expecto Patronum, little buddies. And we're back. Welcome. Oh, Johnny and the douche. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed the Audible ad. Um, at this point, we're going to get into our signature game. So now it's my turn. Oh, no. I got some fun stuff for Foxman. So for the first oh, thing I'm going to no. say is, um, are there at least three songs you can rap to? Three? Yeah. I'll try. I feel like there are. I mean... We'll end the show and be off air, and then you'll just have some like booty in the butt or whatever. Probably, isn't, <laughs> probably isn't a real word or a real lyric. But okay, I feel I'll like try. You have this. I'll try my best. I mean, you'd only need three if you got all three wrong. Let's put it that way. Okay, all right, which is very likely. Okay. Likely. Um, so, what I really like about the show is um, they talk a lot about you know it's it's a throwback to um, black exploitation and those things, but they also just have a lot of. Um, black entertainment references and they've talked about kung fu and how that's a big thing yeah, they talked about beyonce in the yeah, last yeah, one. yeah 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 there's, there's squabbles is talking about being in prison and, and on the lusting after someone before he got in he's yeah. like you haven't even seen beyonce or Nicki minaj or someone's daughter lisa monet is- yeah he's like oh she has a daughter yeah which is um janelle monet right? oh, that does not sound right no i, I that's can't the other I- artist anyway um so this is entitled black trivia month Okay. Even though it's just one episode. <laughs> okay, but it, sure. Anyway, uh, 
Which movie was Pam Greer not in? Who? Pam Greer. Who? Uh, have you ever seen Jackie Brown, the Quentin Tarantino movie? Yeah, I mean, 15 years, 20 years ago? Didn't I think it may have just come out 20 years ago, so you thought, saw it in theaters as a kid? I saw it only a couple of years after that, like... Okay, a so long time ago. she's the, the the main black woman in that movie. Oof, this she's, is gonna be rough. She's in a lot of black exploitation films. Okay, her most famous one, which I didn't put on here, is Foxy Brown. Okay, I remember Foxy that, Brown. Yeah. she had the fro, and the fro had razor blades in it, so people go to grab her hair in a fight, and they cut their hand open. Okay, gotcha. Great movie. Um, so was she in? Uh, which movie was she not in? Scream, Blackula Scream, Coffee, or Shaft? Hold on, is Scream, Blackula, Scream one movie? Yeah, it's the second Blackula So there are three movie. different things? Yeah, there's three movies. You tell me the one she's not okay, in. Okay, say, say them one more time. So Scream, Blackula, Scream okay. is one movie. It's Blackula 2, basically. Okay. Coffee or Shaft? I'm going to say Coffee. No. So Coffee was actually a sequel to Foxy Brown, and they decided on the editing floor that they'd make it its own thing. Uh, so it's Shaft. She's not in Shaft. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So um, you have to wrap... Like, not long, whatever verse, or you know. Um, but the first one you have to do as Urkel. Can I? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Can I do that? All right, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Um, Tag team, back again. <laughs> Check it, the record out. Last begin. Party on, party people. Let me hear some noise. DC's in the house. Jump, jump, rejoice. Says a party over here. Party over there. Wave your hands in the air. Say the dairy air. These three words. When you get in bed, say whoop. That is Lala. <laughs> oh my goodness. I've got a... Uh, okay, thank you. Gawk that, gawk that, very polite. Little known flat, a fact, uh, the first um, piece of audio I ever owned was the cassette of Woomp. There it is. Wow. And then my first CD was Dookie by Green Day. That's pretty impressive. Um, I was impressed at how lo- much of those lyrics you knew. Oh, wow, All thanks, right, yeah. man. All right, so going on to the next one. Which movie did the Wu-Tang Clan get their name from? Ready for this? Yeah. Shaolin and the Wu Tang, Wu Tang Clan, or Wu Tang versus Ninja? The first one. That's correct. Yes. Oddly enough, that it, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, that was the most recent one. And that, I mean, obviously it's all tied together. Sure. But they okay. saw Shaolin and the Wu Tang, and like, that's badass. Let's name that. And then, of course, all the other movies at a different time. Okay, cool. All righty, all righty. You're good there. We got one more. All right, what you got? Which black Marvel hero? came first uh luke cage black panther or blade luke cage no it's black panther damn it so black panther is from 1966 he was an issue of uh fantastic four when they gotcha. go to meet t'challa after that would have been luke cage in 72 i think or 71 and then blade was 73 gotcha damn yeah it. okay yeah. all right what do you got for me um do you have another song you can rap to um yeah all right, I will let you make the choice between uh, the two people, uh, either as Chris Rock or Chris Tucker. I guess I'll do Chris Tucker. Okay. Um, I feel like I can do Chris Rock easier than Chris Tucker, but I also feel like I can do Chris Tucker. Okay. And, and he talks like this, right? What? Um, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Oof. If you want to hate me, then hate me. What can I do but keep getting money? Funny, I was just like you. I had the hustle hard. Never give up until I made it. Now you're saying that's a clever... Uh, nothing to play with. I don't know what song that was, but it sounded like you just took a shot of helium. <laughs> <laughs> it's so high-pitched. Um, what song was that? That was uh, You Can Hate Me Now by Nas. Nice, yeah. nice. My goodness. I feel like... Uh, I feel like that's going to pop really fucking loud into the mic. Maybe. Uh, I feel like <laughs> if God I had the gain all the way down. <laughs> if you made me do more rap stuff, I probably would have just ended up doing the thong song. <laughs> <laughs> Dumps in the truck. Yeah, the thong, 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 thong. thong. <laughs> uh, all right. Sweet. So that's okay. it for the game. Um, right. So now we're loosey-goosey. Yeah. And I can go ahead and get us back into World yes. War. Okay. All right. So um, th- we're back in the Seagate prison uh, in Georgia. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so Luke Cage goes to talk to Reva when no guards are around. And he says, uh, I got to ask you a question. Like, are you tied to anyone in here? Relationships, relatives, whatever. Like, uh, and he tells her about the fighting ring at this point. She wants to go tell somebody, inform. And he's like, I have no idea who's tied into this. Like, they're going to hurt you. Yeah. Uh, you need to just get away from here. And then, like, please give this to my lawyer and tell him I'm ready to talk now. And, you know, tell him whatever. Yeah. So, he, he's um, ready to be a snitch. 
Yeah, and then uh, after this, uh, Luke goes and talks to uh, Squabs, and uh, he is he's basically telling him, you know, about uh, shit. That's the part where he kind of tells him, I guess, a, a little bit about what's going on, and then Shades comes up to Squabs. That's right, Shades comes up to Squabs afterwards. And that's when they beat the information out of Squabs, and we find out later they fucking kill him. Yeah, he doesn't survive. Yeah, so that was that was a little upsetting because he was. But I mean, you figured that was probably the case since Squabs isn't in the current timeline uh, where we're at. But so yeah, they kill poor little Squabs. I mean, it would be nice if an episode went by where someone he liked didn't die. I mean, I guess Connie survived. Yeah. So they're like, well, fine, we'll kill Squabs. And uh, and so then uh, Shades and the other dude come up with like these homemade uh, what do you call those things? brass knuckles brass knuckles yeah. yeah and they beat Luke Cage within like an inch of his life yes uh, so he's has to be infirmarized yeah so now you see Reva seeing what's happened to Luke Cage and uh, pleading with the doctor this doctor you've seen a, a few times he um, even made a comment earlier to Reva like implying that there is a connection there yeah um and that normally she doesn't give that much information to an inmate because she's opened up to him a little bit right yeah and so uh i guess at this point it's not very clear but there's obviously the rumors that she didn't believe about the um experiments and things yeah but now that she realizes that she didn't know there's an underground fighting ring where it's like you know the mandingo fights from uh from Django yeah like this all this is going on the place she works straight with, out of Candyland right yeah yeah she's very um she I, I think she thinks it's a possibility so she says if there's anything can you can do like I've heard the rumors essentially do it yeah uh, which cuts to him being in this weird tank and you immediately see the tr on him yeah he's got some tubes it going looked into like his a uh, for it looked like um uh, a tanning booth. It's kind of yeah, it does like. look like yeah, like yeah. A, a tanning booth. I'm pretty sure, like, if as a prop, that's probably like what they started with. Yeah, and then, like, and then just it up. customized it. Right? Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, they got him laying in there. He's got his fancy little metal tiara on, um, his little power gauntlet thing yeah. sort of around his uh, his wrist. Um, but uh, but as he's being put in there and he's you know sealed in and the water's starting to come up inside of this chamber, uh, Rackham comes in and he pulls a gun on the doctor and he's like, you know. This guy's gonna fucking rat on me. Fuck that! And he like pulls this lever, which makes everything go haywire. And then Luke's in there, like underwater, yeah. screaming like in agony. And then all of a sudden, the whole thing explodes. Yeah. And the doctor tried to reason with Rackham a little bit, saying like, "Look, he's almost dead. I'm just trying to test out some of these things on a body that's still living. Like kind of yeah. like a look. There's he's hopeless. He's I'm damaged just, goods anyway. He's damaged goods. Like let me just try my test. It's important. Kind of." Not playing like he's actually trying to save his life, um, but he wasn't buying it. So now things are coming to a head. Yeah, and uh, so during you know the the explosion happens uh, after the smoke is clearing, we see Luke Cage's hand come up out of the thing. He raises himself up. Uh, the whole room's in shambles. Rackham, I'm pretty sure, is dead. Yes, right? he looks. Yeah, dead. from the explosion, the doctor seems to possibly maybe be alive, but he's definitely not. Uh, he's indisposed to say the least. Yeah, he, he, I, I couldn't tell you for sure. I think I think I saw him like kind of breathing or maybe coughing a little off to the side, but he is out of it. Yes. Um. So at this point, uh, Luke basically starts punching. He just turns around because he's like fuck and punches a wall, and he's a bit stronger than usual now. <laughs> like, yes. He does a little damage to the wall, and he immediately realizes, oh shit, stuff's getting real. And this is the part where they effectively, I think, juxtapose Spliced. him. Yeah. yeah, he's basically just tearing the place up and breaking out with his powers. Yes. And meanwhile, you keep seeing footage of him doing the same thing with Connie. Yeah, and punching getting his out, way of the out of the rubble. Yeah, yeah it was the cool. Superpowers. Like the, the back and forth was really good, and he's basically doing the exact same thing in both, but just punching his and way. It, it is concrete. sweet when he stands up and you see the tiara and the arm things and they're cheesy but it's also like hey there's a legitimate way to get him into that costume even just for a short amount of time and uh okay so he actually escapes from the place um which was fucking awesome oh wait no this is the moment okay yeah he punches the thing realizes he has the powers and that's when he goes that's when he goes sweet christmas which I is just fucking love i mean we had to wait four hours to get it but it was definitely, definitely you and i worthless. literally cheered when it yeah happened. yeah it was amazing <laughs> it was um, so good and for some reason i was thinking that was later but no we get another really sweet fan moment we do like yeah because minutes. um uh so basically he he uh, in in the present now he's connie knows his secret <laughs> yes. so he asked her to keep it but in the past 
Uh, it shows him he has obviously swam off this island onto the mainland and he finds a clothesline with some clothes on it. So he throws it on and it just so happens to be his old school Luke Cage outfit from the 70s. So he grabs a big 70s collar, long sleeve, like mustard yellow shirt. Yeah. He also grabs jeans that are hanging on a, a clothesline that just happened to have a chain uh like a chain belt <laughs> yeah and he puts it on and looks in his reflection in the car and uh what does he say oh shit I'm trying he, to think what he is says it? something really funny at that part uh I, oh yeah i know he's like you look like a damn fool yeah you look like a damn fool <laughs> but it's just great to actually see the ridiculousness of that original costume and all yeah. its glory and the for way, a few minutes yes uh, that's the great part here is that they did it in a way that wasn't cheesy it was tongue-in-cheek it was funny it was actually explained within the arc of the story yeah they and did, it was very short and temporary and i think there's always that want uh, when you do a comic character to see them in their costume and what there's like their iconic thing is for, but I think yeah, the Wolverine fans have been uh, yelling for that yellow costume for years, right? But we, I think there's also uh, an acceptance that not all of them are going to actually look good on the screen. So, oh, totally. like Daredevil, the payoff of season one is him getting the costume finally. Yeah, and you're like, it looks pretty badass. Yes. Whereas here, it's like. Let's give the joke payoff because we're never going to put him in that goddamn costume. We yeah. can't make, we're not going to get like a leather custom made version of a mustard yellow shirt. Yes. They, we're not going to make this just work. Would not Let's play just do in it. The, yeah, absolutely. In the present, that would not work. Yeah. So um, he calls uh, Reva Connors from a uh, like collect call from a phone booth and uh, they meet in a motel and then he shaves off um, that big old Questlove head of hair and his beard. Yes, and uh, so now he's looking fine. He's with Reva. He looks like the same as he's looked the whole episode. He, tr he cleaned up pretty easily. Yeah, and she explains a couple of things here. Like, um, uh, she says the bath thing that you were in, it, it wasn't supposed to do that. It, it was, was supposed only, to heal you faster. That's it, just heal you. Like, it wasn't supposed to give you fucking super strength. You're just supposed to heal. Like, I, I want you to be safe. Yeah, so it's kind of the classic Marvel, um, like, hero explanation. It's never planned. Because yeah. otherwise, then you just have people replicating it. So it's kind of like the Hulk. No one can really make another Hulk because it was an accident involving gamma radiation. Yeah. So I, it's nice just to at least put that out there because then you're not expecting like, well, you know, why didn't those people just make a hundred other Luke Cages? Yeah. Right. So um, uh, this oh the other significant significant thing about this scene. Well, first off, they end up kissing. You know, they thank each other for saving their lives. Um, and then she's like, "You're gonna need to change your name." So this is how we move on from Carl. Um, he says. You know, my, my father was a preacher, and then he quotes something from Luke 4.18. Yeah. Which is, and, then, uh, and then he's like, you know, my father also said you could never cage a man that wants to be free. And she's like, so Luke, Luke Freeman. Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, uh, a little too on the nose. On the nose, yeah. And then the reveal of what his name, I mean, which we know his Cut name back is. back to the present. But instead of him actually saying it to her... Um, and after you realize that he's going to have to be a fugitive on the run, because in the past, that's what he's saying. Like, yes. I can't ever be myself yes. again. Uh, he then takes his hoodie off. And announces to the news after he gets out of this rebel and says, I'm Luke Cage. And that's where the episode ends. Yes. Very cool. Pretty sweet moment. It was right? a, just a great episode in general. For me, it was definitely the best one of what's already been a very good uh, series yes, so far. Yes, very much so. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited. But uh, I guess this is this is kind of it for the marathon. This here. is it for the marathon. I'm at this moment. I will say one other thing. Oh, go ahead. I felt... Um, I mean, I get that he's called Luke Cage in the comics, but don't you think it would have been better if, if his father named him after uh, a verse Austin 316? And then his name would have been... Austin Cage. Austin Cage. And he could have done the Stone Cold Stunner. <laughs> yeah. <A> truly modern take. <laughs> yeah. But that'd be funny if he just goes around doing the Stunner to people, kick, yeah. kick him in the nuts, basically, and then do Which the Which essentially little... would rip their head off. With, with his <laughs> yeah. super strength. He'd That's just be true. popping heads off left and right. That's funny. All okay, right. well, anyway. uh, thanks everybody for tuned in for the whole marathon and anybody listening in the future, fuck you for not getting in on the ground floor. Seriously, <laughs> assholes. Um, but uh, seriously, we will have more episodes upcoming for this. We have Westworld coming up and uh, American Horror Story going currently. So uh, stick around. And as always, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Reddit, just search BoobTube Buddies. And then email us at boobtubebuddies at gmail.com. If you've been listening, you know that we shout out anything that we get on air. So uh, uh, go ahead. And, <laughs> wow, who's fucking weed whacking outside of the know. window? It's 6.43 at night. <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's got some Don't daylight know left. we're on the fucking... It's some assholes weed like whacking. right at the finish line in some douchebag. There's an appropriate time for everything, and this is never it. <laughs> All right, you know what? Just uh, put a bow on this, bitch. Jesus.
Jesus. Uh, we will now see you in roughly four days, little buddies. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs>